Hello everybody, how's it going today? My name's Colton, and I'm joined by Jennifer, who you meet in just a little bit, and we are here from the Elyria Public Library System, and today, we're cooking. Jennifer will be making a dessert, but I'm up first, and I'm making the ultimate comfort food, as well as my favorite food, pizza. Now, if you're my mom at home watching this video, you're probably freaking out, con contacting various emergency services over just the idea of me cooking. And it's because I'm not that great of a chef. But, Mom, don't worry. Don't worry. It's okay. It's really, it's really okay. Because today, we're taking it easy. We're not going to be using any the oven. We're not going to be using the stovetop. We're not going to be using any scary sharp knives to make our pizza. And put down your sous vides. Because today, we're using a microwave and a mug. Making something super easy that anybody can do even me, and at a price that will fit any budget. Let's get started. So here is everything you'll need to make your pizza. And now we must choose our most important part, our muggiest of mugs parts, our mug. It could be any microwave safe mug. Here are some mugs that I found. I love my cat, which I took from my mom because I love my mom. We have Super Peeps, which is Super indeed. And I also brought my favorite mug. Now, this is my commemorative fall 2009 mug from TV's The View, which was my favorite show of 2009. 2009 was not my best year personally, but it was a great year for The View. But it's not what I'm using today because I'm feeling a different mood. I'm feeling like I have a little bit of catitude. So that's the mug I will be baking in today. So sorry, Whoopi. Maybe next time. So the first part of any pizza is it works in layers. And our first layer is our dough. So in your microwave mug, you're going to mix in four tablespoons of flour, one eighth teaspoon of salt, one eighth teaspoon of baking powder, just a little pinch of baking salt. And you're gonna stir it around and mix all your dry ingredients together. Really good, and I think that looks pretty good. Then you're gonna add your wet ingredients. So that's three tablespoons milk and one tablespoon of oil. And then you're gonna whisk it around thoroughly. You're gonna give it a really good spin because you're eventually gonna end up with <clears throat> dough, because that's what you're making. You're making dough. And you'll, you'll know when you have it, it's going to feel real doughy looking and real sticky and fun and all that good stuff. And once you have that done, you're going to smooth it out a little bit. And there you go. You got some really cool dough looking there. And then we have our next layer. Our next layer is, of course, the sauce. So you use a spoonful of sauce here. You're going to add enough, well, maybe a little more, just to kind of cover the top. About as saucy as you want to get it, you know. If you like really saucy pizza, I say sauce it up. If you don't want a lot of sauce, you know, just get enough to get a good layer. So we have about, that's what we have there. We have our sauce. And the next part is the best part. It's the cheese part. I feel like we should have some kind of cool song, like cheese or something. I don't know. That's not my job. That's post-production's job. So I have some shredded mozzarella here. And you're just going to put enough in. You're going to sprinkle some. Now the recipe calls for just a little bit to cover the top. And that's what it looked like there. But if you want to use a little more, that's okay too. Because there is no judgment here in the world of mug meals. So if you want to use a little cheese, you want to use a medium amount of cheese, you want to use all the cheese, you cheese any way you cheese, please. So I'm just going to why not, right? This is mug meals and we do as we please. So, then your next layer, of course, is gonna be your toppings. So something like you want some pepperoni, olives, mushrooms, some Italian seasonings, whatever you're into, you're gonna put that on top. I only wanted to feel the cheese pizza today, so mine was actually done. So, the next part is microwaving it. So we're gonna microwave it for 80 seconds. So, I'm gonna do that right now. When I come back, we should have 
pizza, let's see. So, we gave our pizza about 80 seconds in the microwave and I think we got it. We have the cheese melted on top. Everything's looking good and yummy. Take a little peek there. And that's it. That's all it takes. And now, you have pizza. I don't know how it works. Space, I don't know, maybe tiny robots. Who knows? It's not important. What is important is now. I have delicious, cheesy spoon of pizza. What more could you ask for? But you should ask for more. Because every meal should have dessert. I'm pretty sure that's the law of the land. I'm pretty sure scientists can back me up on that. Every meal should have dessert. So I'm gonna turn this video over to Jennifer, who's gonna be making something deliciously sweet to go with all this delicious, savory. Hi, I'm Jennifer, and like Colton said, I'm making a dessert. And I'm not making just any dessert. I'm going to make a brownie today. And what is better than a brownie? Maybe a warm brownie. And what could be better than a warm brownie? A warm brownie that comes out in one minute. Yes, one minute. Here's what you'll need. All you need is a bowl or a cup. I like to use my soup bowl because it's easy to clean out. And if you're in the dorm, many of you will keep this on hand. You'll need flour, sugar, cocoa powder, I prefer Hershey's dark chocolate, some salt, cooking oil. The cooking oil could be vegetable oil, coconut oil, grapeseed oil, any kind of oil that you would use for cooking or baking. And lastly, you're gonna need some vanilla. Oh, but don't forget the water. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to do is you're gonna mix in the dry ingredients. So that is one quarter cup of sugar, one quarter cup of flour, two tablespoons of cocoa powder, and just a dash of salt. Just a little bit to help it bake. Then you're going to mix it in. When you're mixing, you need to make sure that all of those powders combine. So you want the cocoa powder, the sugar, and the flour to be mixed in really well. So you're gonna have it just like you would pour it from a box. Next, we're going to add in the wet ingredients. So that's one quarter cup of water, two tablespoons of oil, and since I bake with my mom all the time, I don't use a measuring spoon to measure out my vanilla. It's always just for taste. So just a little bit of vanilla. And again, you're going to mix it up really well. And you want that consistency to be just like you would if you're mixing from a box. Nice and gooey. And since this is no egg, technically, you could eat it right now if you wanted to. But I just like to lick the spoon. Once it's all mixed in, now you're ready to put it in the microwave. And this part is really up to you and how you like your brownie to be. I like a fudgy brownie. So, I'm going to cook it for one minute and 30 seconds. But, if you like your brownie to be more cake-like, you're going to cook it for two minutes. Okay. okay, when you're done, it's going to be completely cooked and ready to eat. Now, you have to wait a little bit, it will be too hot. But personally, when I make a brownie in a mug, I make it to have an ice cream sundae. So here's where I would add my ice cream, Ben and Jerry's pairs nicely, some chocolate sauce. You might even add some chocolate chips or some crushed up candies, whatever you want, sky is the limit. But you do have to wait maybe five minutes, unless you want to burn your tongue before you eat it. See, simple ingredients, that's it. 
Colt and I want to thank you for coming out today and joining us for our mug meals. Have a great day.